Welcome back to We Want Picks. I'm Artem MMA, and I'm going to be talking about this weekend's Bellator card, which will be taking place in Paris. It is going to be Bellator Champion Series taking place on Friday at 11 a.m. Eastern Time is when it is going to start, and it should be a pretty good card. It is a pretty small one for Bellator. Bellator does tend to put on really, really long cards, like 15 fight long cards. There's only 10 fights on this card, but it should definitely be a pretty quality event. You do have some very good and big name fighters such as Cedric Dumbe who was a superstar in France, Patchy Mix and Magomed Magomedov are fighting for the title and they are some of the better bantamweights on the planet as well as some really good prospects such as Archie Colgan and Slim Trabalsi on the card as well. And before I do get into that though, of course you can get all of the We Want Picks content on the We Want Picks website but you can get a three day free trial if you do sign up using my code ARTEM. With that, you get access to everything for three days, and you can cancel during that three-day free trial period if you don't like it. And of course, what you get is Angelo and Jacob's Bets, their UFC predictions, tools that help you make your own bets as well as articles that I write every single week, which will be about the regional shows such as Road to UFC, which is going to be on this weekend, as well as Bellator, and then a lot of other regional shows that are also going to be on this weekend. So I'm going to be writing that article as soon as this video is finished recording. And it's going to be a pretty long one, so definitely do check that out if you are a We Want Picks Premium member. And with all of that being said, I'll see you guys in the video. I am going to go through the prelims rather quickly as the New Zealand winter has head kicked my immune system and I have caught a cold again. But kicking off the card is going to be Asael Adjuge fighting Bruno Fontes. Fontes will be making his Bellator debut and he hasn't really fought for a while. I'm kind of assuming he got a contract after he won the title in, ju in Jungle Fight in Brazil, but then just didn't really get the debut fight until now, something along those lines. But he is kind of an interesting fighter because I would consider him to be very well-rounded, mostly a grappler, I would say, but he does have pretty decent striking as well. He is listed at 5'7", which is much shorter than his opponent, Ajuj, but he is quite well-built, like he has got quite a bit of width to him at 145 pounds. One thing that I did notice about Bruno Fontes, though, is that he can get taken down, and that he can also get outstruck. I didn't think that he was the most technical striker in the world, even though he is pretty high volume and he is pretty aggressive. Does throw a lot of leak kicks, which could actually disrupt Asael Ajuj's game, because I feel like Asael Ajuj must have some sort of kickboxing background, because this guy uses his length and his kickboxing very, very well. But he's got an interesting style, because he shoots for takedowns as well. And um, yeah, if you watch his fight, he throws a lot of kicks, a lot of body kicks, a lot of head kicks, and he's very, very fast. Kind of has that crouched down kickboxing sort of style, which may leave him open to leg kicks, but he does check them quite well. But Fontes will be throwing a lot of kicks to a sale of Juju's legs. One thing that I am kind of interested in with a sale is just the fact that he is such a good striker. And he does shoot for takedowns pretty regularly. I mean, the way that he beat George Sasu was with his wrestling, which was kind of interesting. And he's kind of done the same sort of thing throughout his Bellator career. So I do like Ajuj as a prospect. I mean, he's a guy that's a really good striker and a decent wrestler as well. I do think this is probably going to be his toughest opponent yet because Bruno Fontes does have experience against some very good competition. 4-0, 12-2, and 11-1. and I am going to be predicting a sale of Juge to win this fight by decision, but I did want to kind of let you guys know as well, if you want to find tape on Bruno Fontes, he does fight under a different name. It's not Bruno Fontes. I think it's Bruno Caiera is how I managed to find it. But once you once you find one fight, you will find them all. They are on YouTube. So I'm going to pick a Juge. I'm going to pick a Juge to win by decision. It looks like I am not in the majority on that one there. Now we have Aspen Ladd fighting against Ekaterina Shakalova, and Aspen Ladd is actually the underdog in this fight here. I think the odds are minus 120 for Shakalova, minus 110 for Aspen Ladd. I am actually going to predict Aspen Ladd to win this fight. Um, I don't feel that good about it, I'll be honest. I'm going to double check the weight class it's at, because it is at woman's 145 pounds, and that is where Aspen Ladd has moved to since being released from the UFC, but... Ekaterina Shekalova is 5'2", and she's definitely 5'2". She's very, very short for the weight class. Every fight that I found of her, which wasn't all of them, I will admit, I couldn't find all of her fights, but of the ones that I did find out of her, she was the shorter fighter in all of them, and she's a wrestler. 
for the most part. She does actually seem to have some sort of wrestling background because every time she shot for a takedown, she didn't really have any problems whatsoever getting her opponents down to the ground. I think that she might struggle a little bit doing that with Aspen Ladd because Aspen Ladd is a very good wrestler. She does have a solid wrestling background, but for some reason she fell in love with her hands, which is kind of odd because... Aspen Lad is not a very good striker. She doesn't really have very good range management whatsoever. Like, she'll be on the other side of the cage throwing strikes. It's kind of weird to watch. If, Chile, if you watch her fight against Elena Kolesnik, I feel like this is the most egregious example of her doing this. Kolesnik just outstruck her the whole fight, and Aspen Lad, with her wrestling background, didn't shoot for takedowns. I think that she probably could have success maybe in the striking here because I wasn't very impressed by Katerina Shekalova's striking whatsoever. So if this fight does end up being on the feet, I think it probably could end up being a pretty hard watch. But I think that if there is a bit of wrestling, I like Aspen Ladd in the matchup. I think that she should be able to reverse positions that Shekalova puts her in if she does take her down. But also Aspen Ladd is going to be the much bigger fighter in the matchup as well. And I think that she should be able to use her wrestling to beat Shekalova as the underdog but most of Tapology is predicting Lad to win the fight. And now Imam Shafi Aliyev is going to be fighting Mike Shipman, and Imam Shafi Aliyev is minus 900. And to be honest with you, like to be fully honest with you, I don't actually think there's that much evidence out there that suggests that Aliyev should be a minus 900 favorite. Because if I do watch his fight, um, you can find them. Eagle FC, he did fight a couple times for Eagle FC. They're on YouTube, no real issue finding them. I didn't think that he really looked that impressive doing it. For some reason, I couldn't find his fight against Sean Con Connor Fallon, but I did actually watch a video of someone recapping the card, and they were going on about how the fight shouldn't have been stopped, which is kind of interesting. But I did watch a fo see a photo of Imam Shafi Aliyev like, slamming an elbow down on his opponent. I'm assuming that's how it happened. But that's how he fights. He does kind of fight how you would expect him to. He does pressure forward very, very well. Every time I've watched him fight on the feet, he's pushing his fighters backwards. He's pressuring his opponents backwards, sorry. And then he shoots for a takedown and has really no issues whatsoever getting those takedowns. And I'm not that convinced that Mike Shipman will be able to defend the takedowns of Imam Shafi. I mean, maybe he could have some success on the feet, but Shipman's not going to be bigger than Shafi because Imam Shafi is taller than him <laughs> and really, really wide for 185 pounds, man. Like, he's massive. So, yeah, I'm going to pick Imam Shafi Aliyev. He does exactly what you would expect him to. Shipman's been up and down recently. He had a pretty good win recently. Where was it? Against Pietro Panini, but... Yeah, I don't know, he got knocked out by Gregory Babine, who's like 41 years old, who's also on this card. But yeah, I like Aliyev. I'm going to pick Aliyev to win by TKO due to ground and pound. He's minus 900. As I did say, like, there's genuinely not that much evidence to suggest that he, that he should be minus 900 because he's never seen any adversity, but that probably is evidence in itself. I'll just move on. Mansoir Barnawi is going to be fighting Yasuki Yachi, and... Uh, it's kind of hard to be confident in Mansoir Barnawi because you've got to consider how he has lost since signing to Bellator. If you guys don't know who Barnawi is, I think he won a million dollars in this Road to Road UFC Road FC. I apologize, Road FC tournament when he did defeat Asal Kwan in the final. And then he didn't fight for about two and a half years, but Bellator signed him after that. And then he defeated Adam Piccolotti and looked really good. But since then he has lost a couple of fights. And why I say you've got to consider how he's lost those fights, because he's lost those fights by being out-grappled. And that's kind of odd, because that's what Mansoir Barnawi is actually really good at. That's his strength, is it, his grappling. And that's what Yusuke Yachi is. Yusuke Yachi is a grappler. And I know you might just look at him and see a 26-13 and 13 record and assume he's not actually that good. He is pretty decent. I mean, if you go through his career and you really, really just kind of look at numbers on a page... The guys that he's beaten, the guys that he's lost to, are very high-level fighters. This guy has fought very high-level fighters throughout his entire career. But do I think he can go out there against Mansoir Barnawi and help grapple Mansoir Barnawi? I am going to say no to that one. Uh, one thing that I will say about Barnawi is he is very, very good at reversals. Like, if you put him in a bad position, he's going to somehow scramble out of it. He does have a very, very good grappling game. He is a very good defensive grappler, even though he has been out grappled in his most recent fights which is kind of interesting to see 
but he should be able to get one back here and beat Yusuke Yachi in this matchup here. It is also in France, and he's French, so he's got a little bit of a hometown advantage. Minus 400, pretty wide. I know I know you, you can just look at Yachi and assume he's not that good because of his record, but he's everyone he's fought. Roberto de Souza was a Ryzen champion. Luis Gustavo is pretty good. Boyd Allen was 16 and 1, 16 and 4, sorry. I mean, Zach, Zach Zane, Zach Zane. Um, but yeah, like, numbers on a page, you would just assume by now he should be minus 400. But I do look at the way he's been losing his fights, and I do lose a little bit of confidence in him, but I am still got a decent amount of predict confidence in predicting Barnawi to win this matchup. Slim Trabalsi will be taking on Louis Sutherland, Louis Sutherland sorry, in the in the featured prelim of the night, and uh, Slim Trabelsi is a heavyweight prospect that I consider to be very good, and I think it's a bad matchup for Louis Sutherland, because Louis Sutherland's a pretty decent striker for the weight class, he's a big guy, he's six foot three, pretty well built, like he's he's just a, he's a big, he's a big heavyweight, and he does have a lot of power, and he does have seemingly some sort of Muay Thai background, because, um, dude, he was smoking, Alison Meeks with knees in that matchup, like, like, absolutely smoking him, but he was getting taken down a lot, and Slim Trebelsi's a wrestler, and I kind of just looked at that and thought, Trebelsi's gonna take this guy down, if you look at Trebelsi's whole career, he beat a 4-0 guy, and then he fought, I think Luis Henrique is like a former UFC fighter, but I could be wrong about that, but then he took on a 12-0 prospect, and he managed to reverse positions on the ground that he was put in, and dominates with top control and ground and pound, and then he beat Davion Franklin by injury, so kind of iffy, but Trebelsi's a very, very talented wrestler at this weight class, and Louis Sutherland, to me, doesn't really seem to have any really good takedown defense, so I think he's just going to really struggle with Trebelsi getting takedowns here, so I do like Trebelsi, I like him to win by finish uh, with the grappling, maybe a submission, but probably most likely a ground and pound TKO because that is what Trebalsi does specialize in, getting in top condition, top position, and then landing big time ground and pound. The belt Guiti will be fighting Archie Colgan. I do like Archie Colgan in this fight. I feel like every time Colgan fights, he does kind of seem to look more and more impressive. He had a very good performance against Justin Montalvo, that was prospect versus prospect, and in that matchup he managed to outbox the boxer in Montalvo, which was very impressive, and then since then has been kind of getting past some more experienced fighters. Peter Buist is a former one championship fighter who had success over there in that promotion. Tabelt Guiti is kind of interesting to me, he's a former UFC fighter, but that was a very long time ago, and then he fought in the regional scene a bit, and um, here he is in Bellator. Um, it is going to be his home court advantage, I guess you could say, but I like Archie Colgan's skill set a lot. He's a very good boxer wrestler, and he's a very good boxer as well. Uh, I do like Colgan quite a bit in this matchup against Goiti. Kane Musa was having a lot of success against him, and I feel like him and Colgan have somewhat of a similar style. Musa was having a lot of success in the striking against Thibaut Goiti, which probably isn't the best look when you do consider that Colgan's going to be a lot better, and the way that Goiti knocked out Musa was Moisa, Musa kind of, kind of hurt him, I, or at least I think he might have thought that he hurt Goiti, and then he got way too over aggressive and left himself wide open to a counter, and that was a brutal knockout win for Goiti, but I don't see Colgan making the same mistakes on the feet, I think he should be able to box up the boat, maybe even getting... Uh, some takedowns as well so yeah give me colgan i'm gonna go with colgan to win by decision as well because it is against another talented fighter eves landu will be fighting jonas bilharino and um i did um look into this one kind of expecting to predict jonas bilharino to win just because i do recognize quite a few of his opponents i definitely recognize jose delano and then i also recognized kanan kawahi who he did beat on the container series two and a half years ago but I kind of looked into it, and I was like, man, like, Jonas Bujarino, he's, he's, he's weird, like, he's, he's a striker, I think, but, um, he also shoots for takedowns, but prefers the fight to be on the feet, and he's not a very good striker, man, like, I just, Bujarino's very sloppy, like, he just really is, and he leaves himself wide open for opportunities, and I'm kind of thinking, East Landu's decent, and a much more technical fighter than him, and he can wrestle in his own right. The problem is that I do kind of have 
which has given me some reservation to pick Eves Landu is just the fact that he has been out wrestled quite a bit in his most recent matchups. This fight here against Asao Kobayashi, Asao Kobayashi um, was able to take him down pretty regularly, but Eves Landu was just beating beating the crap out of him on the feet. To be honest with you, in that matchup, which is why it was a split decision, damage versus control. Kind of that argument kind of happened in that fight. But Jonas Bilharino, I, I do go through and I look at his fight. I don't think... I mean, eight wins by knockout. I mean, how is he knocking these guys out? Like, yes, he caught Kaya Machado in the second round. But this guy is really sloppy, man. Like, And he's been in really good competition throughout his career, which is so confusing to me. It's kind of me. This, this whole part of the prediction video is just me kind of coping. I guess. <laughs> I'm going to pick Eves Landu. I'm going to pick Eves Landu. I don't know how I feel about it, just because I was so disappointed in the tape study. I'm Jonas, I'll be honest. Um, yeah, I like Landu in the matchup. I think he's the much more technical fighter. Borjorino probably is going to have to wrestle here, but I think that Landu's going to make him pay on the feet, and Landu can get his own offensive wrestling going as well. So give me Eves Landu to win a decision in this one here. I think he's going to be able to just kind of outstrike Bill Hirino, I guess maybe Bill Hirino could try and knock him out, but Landu's a tough guy. I don't think Landu's been KO'd too many times in his career, only once. So yeah, I'm going to go with Landu. And now I'm going to pick against Grigory Babini here. And I'll be honest with you, it's uh, it's kind of because like this nonsense can't go on for much longer. Grigory Babini has gone on a 10-year unbeaten streak. He hasn't lost... For 11 years and in that period of time he's turned away some very good prospects you know he turned away mike shipman who i was talking about earlier turned away emiliano sordi who i think actually went on to become the pfl champion yeah he's he's an interesting fighter gregory vivine but now he's 40 years old and i'm kind of thinking like it's gotta it's gotta stop soon right surely <laughs> Costello Vincenis is kind of an interesting fighter that I have made some very bad reads on in the past, I'll be honest. I did pick Camille Onishuk to defeat him, and that was a pretty bad prediction, to be honest with you. I was just really impressed by Camille's striking and his power in his hands, and uh, Costello Vincenis made me look like a right idiot in that one. But then he went and lost to Douglas Lima, so who knows. I do think that Costello Vincenis, though, on this one here, although I don't think he is actually that good at striking... Should be able to survive the onslaught that is the 40-year-old Grigory Babine. And should be able to take him down and outgrapple him. It's it's kind of so hard to predict because Grigory Babine is just like a... He's an interesting human. Like, I watch his fights and he's just absolutely smoking these guys, man. Like, he just knocks everyone out in the first round. But I'm not that convinced that he can beat Costello Vincennese at all. So I am going to predict Costello Vincennese to go out there and shoot for takedowns because he is a grappler. Avoid the massive shots that Gregory Babine is definitely going to be throwing at him. And um, manage to find some sort of decision win is, is how I'm going to go. So I'm going to pick Vincennese. It looks like most people actually agree with me on topology as well. I apologize that... Those last two breakdowns of the fights weren't too good. But let's move on now to the co-main event. Cedric Dumbe is going to be fighting Jaleel Willis. I think this is a good matchup for Dumbe to win. I, I do want to make it clear. I did actually predict against Dumbe when he fought by Sungwa Chamsudinov. And then that fight was kind of stopped weirdly. I think it was the very start of the third round. Dumbe complained about like a splinter in his... It was just weird. It was a really weird fight. And I think it's going to really blow up in PFL's face as well, because if you guys don't know, the UFC have actually started talking to Bison Guachomsedinov to sign him. So the PFL brought in Bison Guachomsedinov to fight Cedric Dumbe in a PFL main event in front of, what, like 20,000 people in that arena, and they only gave him a one-fight contract? I mean, what's going on? But anyway, um, Dumbe, he lost that fight. He was out-wrestled at times. Bison Guachomsedino is just really good, to be honest with you. But before that, he knocked out Zebo in like four seconds, and before that, he was just having his own success on the regional scene. If you are unfamiliar with who Cedric Dumbe is, he is like the Alex Pereira of the lower weight classes, I guess, because Alex Pereira, to my knowledge, was the first ever two weight glory kickboxing champion. And then Cedric Dumbe did it with some of the lower weight classes, and now he's transitioned over to MMA. I do think that Jaleel Willis, though, I think it's a bad matchup for Jaleel Willis. I kind of looked into him, kind of thinking maybe that he could beat him, because there is going to be a massive size discrepancy in this one here. 
Jaleel Willis is 5'11 at 170 pounds compared to Doombe at 5'8. But he's a big guy. Like, Jaleel Willis is quite... He's got, he's got like a lot of bulk to him. I don't really know what the what the wording would be. But he's going to be a much, much bigger opponent than um, what Cedric Doombe has fought in the past. But he's not a wrestler. Like, Jaleel Willis is a striker that doesn't really finish people. It's kind of weird because I, I was watching his matchups and he got caught by Sabah Hamasi and then Sabah Hamasi took him down with ease, submitted him in the first round. I watched him fight Kyle Crutchmer the whole time. Jaleel Willis just kept it on the feet except for the one time when Crutchmer was gassed out and shot a bad takedown in the third round. I'm just kind of thinking Doombay's the better striker. In a matchup, I'm pretty confident he's going to be on the feet. I just don't know if I can trust picking Jaleel Willis to wrestle Doombay, but even then... I thought that Doombe did have decent success in the defensive wrestling against Bison Guachamsudinov, who is absolutely no joke of a wrestler whatsoever. So yeah, I'm going to pick Doombe. I'm going to pick Doombe by KO. It is, a, once again, like, the PFL haven't been giving Doombe the easy matchups. I know he knocked out Jordan Zebo in four seconds, but Jordan Zebo is a massive wrestler for 170 pounds as well, so... Yeah, the whole time Doombe has been in PFL, he's been having these 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 striker versus wrestler fights. But I don't think Jaleel Willis is a wrestler. I think Doombe should be able to knock him out on the feet. So give me Doombe by KO in this fight. And it looks like everyone agrees with me as well. And now we move on to the main event. It is a rematch between Patchy Mix and Magomed Magomedov. And I am going to be predicting Patchy Mix to win. He won the first fight, and um, I've made it pretty clear um, and pretty public, in my opinion, on Patchy Mix. I genuinely believe that Patchy Mix is the best bantamweight in the world right now. And I know a lot of people that don't watch Bellator, uh, um, don't watch the PFL, and only watch the UFC are uh, probably going to call me crazy for that. But I, I genuinely believe that Patchy Mix would beat Sean O'Malley if they were to fight each other. And I think that if Patchy Mix beats Magomed Magomedov for a second time, I think that would just further kind of emphasize that but I do want to say this one thing though Magomed Magomedov was having a lot of success in their first fight he was able to take down Patchy Mix a couple of times but then of course Patchy Mix did start to have success on the feet and eventually did lock up that guillotine choke that was one and a half years ago though and I feel like Patchy Mix has just kind of been getting better <laughs> after that he knocked out Rafion Stotts out cold it was, it was brutal and then he submitted Sergio Pettis in the second round, and Sergio Pettis was coming off that win against Patricio Pitbull. So, yeah, like, I mean, we're, we're kind of seeing a guy making improvements and taking on very difficult opponents and, and getting very good, impressive finish wins against them. Magomed Magomedov kind of is what you would expect him to be. He's a very good wrestler that does like to dominate in top control. But I think it's a bad matchup for him because Pitchy Mix is a grappler for the most part with very good Brazilian jiu-jitsu, and to add to that as well, he's absolutely massive for bantamweight, like if you actually do watch the original fight between Mix and Magomedov, which you can do on YouTube, you will see what I mean when I say there's a massive size difference between the two, Patchy Mix is absolutely gigantic for 135 pounds, and even if Magomed Magomedov does get the takedowns, you can see, and even in that first fight, Patchy Mix was able to get the reversals, was able to pick Magomed, put Magomed Magomedov in bad positions on the ground, and eventually did lock up the gear 10 choke. But more importantly as well, I feel like Mix is getting better as a striker, and we are starting to see that in the fight, and he's now going to be the better striker in the fight against Magomedov. So the only way that Magomedov can have success in this fight is to get the takedowns, but I feel like that could be still a risky endeavor because Mix is dangerous on the ground. He's the much bigger fighter. He should be able to just kind of pure muscle to muscle out muscle Magomedov, even though Magomedov probably is going to be maybe the better wrestler. I mean, I don't know. I feel like Mix might have him covered <laughs> kind of everywhere when I, the more that I kind of talk about it because Mix does have a wrestling background. But Magomedov, Magomedov is a very, very talented fighter. You don't go 20 wins, 3 losses without having some skill. But I do like Mix in the fight. I think Mix honestly has him covered everywhere. Maybe there's just a little bit of bias there from me because I do believe he is the best. But yeah, man, I'd love to see Mix in the UFC because PFL doesn't have a bantamweight division and I'd kind of hate to see Mix fight at 145 pounds and then 
you know, maybe take a loss because he's too small or something like that. I don't know. I like Mix. I think you should be able to beat Magomedov. Let me know what you think in the comments below. Looks like everyone thinks Mix me. Mix beats everyone in Bellator, man. Like, we need to see him in a different promotion for sure. But yeah, let me know what you think in the comments below. And I will see you guys in the next video.